the second one is in 1996, the authority uh, issued some industrial development revenue bonds uh, that were purchased. Uh, and as all of us know, there's been a lot of different uh, changes in the banking business. And one thing that happened was that uh, between U.S. Bank and First Union National Bank, the bond itself has been lost. So what uh, Wells Fargo has asked, and I've been discussing this with a, with a representative from Atlanta, uh, Ms. Holland, who's, she's a senior vice president of the government of institutional banking at Wells Fargo, they have sent us an affidavit of lost and indemnity agreement. We didn't have any liability under that bond, but the bond was issued for $5 million and now has approximately $2,300,000 worth of value. So what they're asking us to do is to authorize the chairman and the secretary to execute a authorization resolution which basically says that we understand based on the affidavit from U.S. National Bank and First Union National Bank that the 1986 bond, in a sense, the bonds are usually green in color and look like this, so that we can get a reissued bond so that this uh, Wells Fargo, who has bought the bond for the second or third time, uh, can have the, that bond in in house and therefore conform to what the banking rules and regulations are. So it's not unusual, it's the first time I've seen one, but it's not unusual uh, to do that. And what we would what we would what I would ask for you to approve is is an authorization resolution saying that you understand that that bond has been lost, that by merger between First Union and Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo is now the holder of the rights to that bond, and therefore you would authorize the chairman to execute the bond, and the uh, I would take the bond then tomorrow to the clerk of Superior Court, Ms. Crow, and ask her to sign the authorization which will allow U.S. National Bank and Wells Fargo to have a bond in their possession that conforms to the bank. None of this is costing y'all any money. Who, who is part of it's, it's an industrial revenue bond that the balance of... It's a loan. It's a loan. A <laughs> loan bond. Yeah, that's the case law where if you couldn't produce the bond, then that was technically not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just say it, it, it was issued by the authority mm -hmm. for U.S. National Bank that First Union National Bank in 1996 purchased. And therefore, it's been reduced by, from $5 million to $2,300,000. We, we, we receive the money. What are the implications if the chairman does assign it? Uh, it probably results in a lawsuit asking the judge to have they him just sign it. It would be, like we say, a reformation of the contract. <laughs> a reformation. So what if the original one gets found? Then what happens? It, it mentions in here that if the original is found, that it's, it's a substitute for the original until such time as that. Okay. So, evidently, it happens very often because I talked to their lawyer is with, with uh, McKenna in Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, Earl Taylor, who's I, I've spoken to Earl Taylor on some bond issues for several times, but McKenna Long and Aldridge evidently is a specialist in lost bonds, and he says <laughs> that it's not uncommon for, for banks to lose these, these <coughs> bonds or where they can't find them. <laughs> do, we, do we charge them a small fee for the well, for our what, what, they have, what they've authorized is is for the, the time that it's taken for me to read, go back and look, and that type of thing. They're going to pay all the fees and costs. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. All righty. You've heard the issue on the lost bond. Any further questions? Seeing that there's none, I solicit a motion I would authorizing the chairman to sign. I would move that we we'll authorize the attorney to draft the proper papers for the chairman to sign in order for us to have that the time. And I have those uh, second. No motion, second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please write in. Good. Now. <laughs> <laughs> for, for your information, uh, 